Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. Uh, thank you. I think now we can relax and get to sing and worship the Lord together. Uh, just two things before that. I think we talked about the 7-Up. When you go into the 7-Up, please remember to pick Stock on Trent Church. Or else if you, don't, you, if you don't pick it, the money goes to the conference. So please select the Stock on Trent Church. We will pray as we start the song service. If you can, pray for us. Okay, let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you this morning for the opportunity that you have given us to come to your house of worship. Be with that dear Lord, as we are going to start the song service, and be with all the service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first hymn for this afternoon is Because He Lives, hymn 526, hymn 526, Because He Lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove. My Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know He holds the future. Is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still. can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Our next song is 294, Power in the Blood. 294, Power in the Blood. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you, O oh, evil, a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb, would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood. Calvary's time, there is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working. 
king power in the precious power of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your king? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. Amen. Because of time, we just sing one stanza of hymn 476, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. 476, just one stanza, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drained. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Shall the church rise as we sing the intro? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. Gracious Father, be with us in this sermon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Did we all have a good week? I welcome you to Stock on Trend uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church. And uh, today we are having Pastor Elijah to give us the bread of life. And uh, may we all have a listening ear and open our hearts and not be hardened. Thank you. Can we stand with uh, the opening hymn? Hymn number 618. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift up his royal banner, he does not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he Jesus, 
Let the trumpet call obey Forth to the mighty conflict In this His glorious day Ye that are men now serving Against unnumbered foes Let courage rise with danger And strength to strength oppose Stand up, stand up for Jesus Stand in His strength alone The arm of flesh will fail you Ye dare not trust your own Put on the gospel armor And watch in unto prayer Where calls the voice of duty Be never wanting them Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song, to him that over. shall be laid with the king of glory shall reign eternally I call upon brother Lincoln to do the Upsal Church, can you all open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 6? 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 6. And it reads, And he said unto him, Behold now, there, there is in the city a man of God, and he is an honourable man. All that saith cometh surely to pass. Now, let us go thither. Peradventure, he can shew us our way that we should go. May the Lord bless this reading of the scripture. Amen. We can have the main prayer from... Pastor Jefferson. And can we prepare to sing hymn number 495? Uh, before we pray, <clears throat> I want to ask a question and uh, each one of us have to think about it. What comes to your, your heart or your mind when Sabbaths come? That Friday evening, what comes to your heart? During the week, do you miss being in church? And whatever you do, are there times you feel the church should come closer to you. This uh, divine hour is an invitation for us that we may have a divine connection with our maker and our creator and our redeemer. I want to pray that in this divine hour our hearts may be lifted to him. May the Lord bless you as we sing the song 400 and 
495. Let's sing, sing Sansa 1 as we meditate, then I'll pray. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus. invite all of us to take a reverend position as we speak to our God. Our Father and our God, we are kneeling down so as to invite you in our hearts. At this hour, dear Jesus, Uplift yourself. Uplift yourself in our church. Touch each one of us now, O oh God, that this day may be a day of an encounter with you. That this day, O oh God, may be a day of transformation. That this day, God, our burdens are going to find solutions. For Lord, we are joining as a family to roll our burdens to you. Our tears, Lord, we are rolling to you. Our worries, Lord, we are putting it on your hands. Lord, touch each one of us. There are so many in need in this church. Some need a physician. For some are sick. Lord, we are sure you have power to heal. And that is why we call upon your name. Heal our wounded hearts. Heal those who are sick. For those who are worried, fill their hearts with hope. For those who are crying, try their tears, O oh God. Wipe their tears, O oh God. For those who are in a confused state, Oh Lord, you are always answer of every question. Dear Jesus, visit them. We want to commit our children to you. Lord, graft them to yourself. Allow them to grow in you. We want to commit our youths to you. That as they grow, they grow in you. Make them wise. We want to commit all the ladies in this church. Unto you, O oh Jesus, anoint them for your own glory. We want to commit all men in this church before you. Lord, allow them to be an inspiration. And this Sabbath, God, as your servant is going to break the bread, Lord, use him. Cover him with your blood. Wash his lips that God, this divine hour, we are going to hear a voice from heaven. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There is a place 
words of comfort sweet near to the heart of God, a place where we are safe, we are meet near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless, redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. Amen. Amen. Before we, I call the, for the tithe and offering, I would like to call Pastor Elijah, uh, Pastor Jefferson again to come and introduce our speaker today, then we can have the next stage. It is hard to introduce a preacher and uh, being a preacher myself, for I can preach about him. I can use a lot of adjective uh, on, on him and uh, our preacher this uh, morning is none other than our pastor, Pastor Elijah Ondenga. He is a pastor and a husband and uh, blessed with a good number of children in this case. Yeah. Yes, you know yeah, he has a good number. Please. Eh, hey, Keegan. Keep quiet. Let the children of Ondenga stand up. If you want to know, please come forward. Come forward. Come forward. You see, I, I am saying the truth. And then you will count. Children of Ondenga. Sami Sumkujambere. Yeah. Look, how many are they? <laughs> How many are they? <laughs> yeah, Ondenga is blessed with a good number, a whole team of football. Uh, we have pastored with Ondenga back at home, and uh, I'm sure he is a man full of experience as a pastor, though I'm his senior. And, uh, but you know, in this work, it's not about being senior. It's about the presence of Holy Spirit. Otherwise, Pastor, you are most welcome to our stock church. Thank you. Uh, Sister Julie can come and uh, do the tithe and offering, please. Thank you. Right, for our tithe and oh, happy Sabbath church. Yeah, for our tithe and offering, I'm going to read from this uh, leaflet here. <clears throat> Each person is connected with God through a covenant relationship and understanding God's appeal of putting him first in your life. You get the tr this from Matthew 6, verse 33. St it stands as an evidence of your relationship with him, recognizing that everything in the world belongs to him. Returning 10% of your income is a loving response to God's invitation to return his tithe and an appreciation of our partnership with him. All the received all tithe received by our local church are sent to their respective conference or mission to support their pastors and other denominational workers. A percentage of the tithe is forwarded to the British Union and the General Conference to support people in ministry worldwide. 
So can we have the deacons and the deaconess to come and collect the tithe and offerings, please? <clears throat> offerings that has been presented today, we ask you that they may go a long way in spreading your gospel all over the world. May you bless the hands that have given to you, Lord. Be with those that have not been able to give. Provide for them so that they will be able to give next time. For we pray all this in the name of Jesus, our servant, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time for the uh, children's story by Sister Joy. Sister Joy. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color is just right, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color is just right, they are precious in his life. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Nice, we are going to start our children's story. As we start, I'd like for Abigail to pray for us. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you this day. Thank you for the gift of life. As we want to start the story, may you help everyone. May you help um, the pastor who wants to preach later after the story. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And also wants to pray. Let's pray. And I hold on to our God. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, my dad. Thank you, him. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, all the our friends. Thank you, all of us. Amen. Amen. He has prayed for all of you if you, have, if you had forgotten to pray. So, hi, children. Hello. Who ate breakfast in the morning? And about the big children, they, they didn't eat. It's only the children who ate. So we're going to learn today about the story of Peter. Who knows Peter in the Bible? Peter and Andrew were fishers of men. When Jesus was choosing his disciples, 
When Jesus was choosing his disciples, he found Andrew and Peter as they were fishing. They had fished the whole night. They couldn't find any fish. When Jesus came to their boat, he just told them, "Can you cast your net deeper into the sea?" When they cast, they were still in doubt because they were like, "We already went during the night. We casted, we went around and around. We didn't find anything." But this man is just coming and he's telling us again, "Can you cast it deeper?" What are we doing the whole night? They still had that doubt, but they were like, "Let's just do it because he say we should do what? We should cast our net." They casted their nets deeper, but to their surprise, they were able to get a lot of fish. Jesus recruited Andrew and Peter as his first disciples as he was choosing his disciples. They continue ministering with God with Jesus in his missions as they continued following Christ there was once a time that they Jesus had gone to pray on the mountain he had sent his disciples to go in front of him using the boat so he was going to fall, when he was done praying he wanted to catch up with the disciples he found that the boat had gone a bit far from the ocean because he's the son of god he's manifest he manifests himself each and everywhere he decided to walk on water so as to be able to catch up to his disciples while he was walking on the water the disciples who are in the boat as you are in the ocean you find sometimes it's windy there is storms at that day unlikely the, we can say likely or unlikely there were some storms so you find the boat was swaying the disciples were worried All of a sudden they are seeing somebody who is walking. Who has ever tried walking on a swimming pool? When you walk on water what happens? Yes. When you try to stand on water, if you are not yes a bigger, you go down on the water. When you are on the swimming pool, can you be able to walk on water? What happens? You sink. So Jesus was walking on water the disciples they wanted to see who is that walking on water they were like can somebody be able to really walk on water can somebody really be walking on water no but you find the disciples they were scared who is that walking on water is it a ghost but Jesus told them do not be afraid do not be afraid then he asked That's why we come to a memory verse in the book of in the book of Matthew Matthew chapter 14 verse 28 and 29 Children do you have your bibles no. Wow <laughs> Parents your children they don't have their bibles Who has who has any all of the children they do, do not have bible so in our memory verse today from the book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 28 i'll read it for you since you don't have a bible it says lord if it is you peter replied tell me thank you tell me to come to you on the water come he said then peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards jesus but you find as peter was walking on the water He was looking at Jesus he still walked on the water but he began doubting his faith he started having a little bit of doubt when he doubted a bit what happened he began to he started sinking nice he started sinking when he sank a bit he was scared he was frightened even when you are taking a shower when there is a lot of water coming into your face some gets into your mouth some gets into your ears somebody feels what somebody feels frightened peter was frightened but jesus told him give me your hand when christ gave him his hand he was able to rise again and he was able to walk in water in this story today we are learning about two things We are learning about faith and we are learning about doubt. We always have our faith in Christ. Sometimes it does not manifest immediately. That's when builds that's when we find doubt builds in between. How many of you even the parents 
At times you tell yourself, I want to do certain particular things. You put yourself as a goal and everything. But after some time you find it's taking a lot of time. The time of manifestation is so long, you start doubting. Is it, is it still happening? Is God still around? You still having doubts. But we are being challenged today. We are being told, as we reflect, we are being told, even though we find like when things are, were not working in the fishing boat, Jesus told Peter and Andrew to cast their nets out one more time. Peter smiled, not expecting much. When they did what Jesus said, they were rewarded with blessings beyond their expectations. When Peter made bad choices, Jesus gave him another chance, even when, even if, when we learned later that Peter denied Jesus three times. So for us as little children and like parents, like Peter, we fail again and again. God is there every time to grab our hand, pick us up, pull us out, and give us another chance to show we trust him. Giving second chances is part of God's loving character. God describes himself in Exodus 34 verse 6. He says, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, he is slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. As little children and also as our parents, we are being told when our faith, we start having doubts in it, we should still ask God to give us his, we should stretch our hands, we reach unto God so that he can replenish and he can give us strength. Because the journey as we head to heaven, it's long. There's a lot of things in between. In our, in our journey of faith, we are being told there's a lot of doubts in the journey. But as Christ gives us strength, he's giving us the energy to overcome this thing. Hello, children. What did you learn today in your story? Yes, Keegan. Yeah, the, the men were fishing. He walked on water. He sank, but Jesus was there. Yes, what did you learn? He forgot about it. Yeah, Peter denied Jesus three times. Our parents, what did you learn from our story? Yeah, to have faith. Yes? We should keep our eyes on Jesus. As, she's, as she had said today, we should have faith. As we have faith and keep us our eyes in Jesus, we are, always to get, we are always going to get rid of these doubts that are always a stumbling block in our faith. Let's pray as we end our story. Let me give her the chance because you already prayed. Let her pray first, then you will also close with a prayer. Come dear. Yeah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Would you be with us as the way the children story today and after we learned everything about God today, Lord, would you be with those who are sick, Lord, and those who are ill, Lord, can you be with them, Lord? Can you be with those who lost their loved ones, Lord? And can you be with them, Lord? Can you be with them, the people who don't know you, Lord? And God, this in the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I also want to pray. Again, is praying again. Pray. Let's pray. Hello. Hello, now, God. Thank you for our heart. Thank you for our hands. Thank you. For a, for a blessing. I ask this, this, this discipline and Abby as to be a home. Oh, man. Thank you. The last prayer. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, thank you for all the people that have come here uh, to learn about you and please uh, uh, can you make us all be safe and in Jesus name amen. amen thank you so much Jesus loves a little chick
Amen. Amen. Um, our next is a meditationary song. The music team can start off with hymn number 359, Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. Let's stand, please. Hark the voice of Jesus calling Who will go and work today? Fields are wide, the harvest waiting Who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master calleth, rich reward he offers free. Who will answer gladly, saying, Here am I, O Lord, send me. If you cannot cross the ocean and the heat, the land to explore you can find the heat the nearer you can help them at your door if you can not speak like angels if you can not preach like Paul you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot be the watchman standing high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, Offering life and peace to all With your prayers and with your bounties You can do whatever in demands You can be like faithful Aaron Holding up the prophet's hand the souls of men are dying and the master calls for you let none hear you idly saying there is nothing i can do gladly take the task he gives you let his work your pleasure be answer quickly when he calleth here am I O Lord send me Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Praise God. I want to thank everybody for coming today. I'm so glad and uh, honored and humbled in the same way to be in this place today. I want to uh, thank Pastor Xorio for the nice introduction, but I forgot to introduce my wife. He, he was interested in uh, showing how rich I am. You know, in Africa, when you have kids, you are rich. And that's why I didn't say how many kids. In Africa, we don't say the number of kids you have. You say you are rich. In a Nandi language, you say we are rich. So allow me at this time to ask my wife to just wave. I know some of you 
Noah, kindly stand up. You know, my wife doesn't know how to speak. I got uh, say that I should speak on her behalf, but she can say I. Uh, in this world, it's funny, God cannot uh, give you, two of you in the family who speaks a lot. I speak a lot, I'm a sanguine and I'm a choleric at the same time. So my wife is a, a phlegmatic, she doesn't speak too much. So I speak on her behalf sometimes, when, uh, when things are not on her side, I speak on her behalf. So members, uh, I want to thank Stock Church for the warm welcome you gave us. You know, uh, their elders, elder, have a bad manners. I don't know how to stand on the pulpit. It's not, I'm a teacher and at the same time a pastor. So I like walking. You may find me uh, at the congregation there. So don't get worried because it's my nature. So I know you're going to have it rough. I think this should be down there, but don't worry. Um, I was saying something. Uh, I want to thank the Stock Church for the great welcome they gave us when we came here. I'm almost one year, and this should be my first time in the pulpit. Uh, there's a Helder Gabon and a Helder, is it called Helder Ekre, the tall gentleman? Yeah, I expected them to be here because they have been looking for me, asking for me. And uh, uh, John, that pastor, when are you going to preach? I say, listen, I have a, a problem. When I go to a new place, I want to see what they do first so that I don't make a mistake. A choleric, if you are a choleric, you are motivated by achievement. If I do something, if I don't achieve, I feel bad in my life. So when I don't achieve my goals, I'm uh, excited and motivated by achievement in my life. So if I don't achieve what I want, I feel demotivated. I cannot even eat and stressed. So I took my time. You saw but the first time Elder Hercule was speaking to me, I could not get anything because the, the English he was using, I, I could not get understanding. So relax, let me have time. I get to learn the language and the culture and the tradition in the church. And then when I get a chance to preach, then I will be in the right place to speak what I want to speak. I hope they should be here, but I think they have missed me today. I've missed them today. I want to uh, ask my boys and uh, uh, my wife. We have a song. We like singing as a family. So we want to present an item uh, uh, to our sermon. And uh, allow me also to challenge you. And uh, allow me to ask Pastor Kisorio and uh, Pastor uh, Miriam and uh, and, uh, I forgot the name, Joe, uh, to give me around five minutes because we need to share of what we have been learning. Uh, We are in a one group of Ray Preacher and uh, we have been going out. So I will request you to give me five minutes to give what we have learned and if they can contribute it will be of great hope. So uh, I want to ask the boys uh, to come here and give us one item. Hey, could you anyone? Thank you so much. For those who understand what I say, I've just said uh, the presence of God is with us. And, um, uh, so you should. You can see my face here if you are very keen. You can see me. And my brother, Pastor, did not introduce all my. This is uh, my brother who is at. Uh, Somerset will be coming by the end of this month, will be joining us to stock. Uh, my firstborn, my secondborn, and there's a little one, I don't know, uh, the one we prayed for. And uh, I don't know whether the other gentleman has gone to my sister's uh, child. So I have three boys, 
uh, and uh, I'm married to one woman who is known. I didn't say that there's another one who is not known. <laughs> so allow us to present this song as we <laughs> we can project it there. We can the song there a little. As we are looking for it, we can have a, a chorus so that we got it. As we are looking for it, let's say, I am happy to die, so happy in Jesus' name. I am happy. My sins are away. I am happy, so happy to die. But the way you are singing, doesn't show that you're happy. It's only that you wanted to accompany me, and uh, I'm okay with that, no problem. We can. Please. Let's start, let's start now. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for that wonderful item. Uh, let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we want to thank you, God, for such a privilege. You have called us to serve you in your vineyard. Today, God, speak to us in a special way. May I decrease as you decrease, and may your glory be seen, and you may your presence be with us in this sermon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The question, or the title of our sermon today, is, are you a man of God? Am I a man of God? Everybody is a man of God. What I mean in this sermon that are you a man of God is the character of God. Everybody was created by God. But we are talking about does my character, my behavior, my walking, my doing reflect the character of God. When someone talks about God, what comes into your mind? When someone speaks the word God in my presence or in your presence, what comes into your attention? Who is God? You know, when I was a young man or as a small boy, I went to ECD kindergarten and I was taught theory that there is God. So I've grown in my life knowing there is God in heaven. It has been my knowledge, the knowledge that there is God. I've read God in the books. I've heard people speak about God. But I don't know who is this God. If today somebody will ask you a question, which kind of a name will you give God? Which kind of a name will you give God? When I wanted to marry, I happened to be a very notorious gentleman because I met my wife when I was in uh, grade 7. When we were doing Pathfinder, for those who know Pathfinder matching, we met and then I wrote a very small note and said, I love you. And he said, I love you too. And then we disappeared for like seven years. We met in a congress, youth congress. And it happened that she came near to the place I was. Uh, we were staying in Busia, Kenya. She reminded me of the what I said, I love you. And I said, I still love you. But my mom was a very tough lady. She could not allow us to bring girls into our house. We are four boys in our family. So then we disappeared and then we went to the uh, university. I went to Bugema University in Uganda. And then we met 2014 on a message when I was wishing everybody a message. 2206, she gave me the number and I kept the number. And I made sure that whenever I used to renew the line, the number used to move. But I, I don't know what I had. She had a love accident, whatever she was. I had my own love accident. Whatever I was, she wanted to be married with somebody. And there's somebody I had from the university I wanted to marry. But when we met again over the message, there was something, brothers. So we started coming together. What am I trying to say? The relationship began to grow. And that's where today you can see 
the result of the three boys here. <laughs> One word, love, brought what we are today. When people talk about God, when someone will ask about God, how are you connected? I was driving the car today and I say, who is this God? I've been hearing this God. But do I any personal relationship with him? The Israel gave God names according to what God did to them. During the, the, when the Israel were crossing Levi Jordan, they gave God a different name. When Miriam was singing, praising God, he gave God a different name. Your experience with God will give God a name. I don't know which name you have given your God. God is a universal name. But which name, if today someone will ask you to stand here, we will say that my God is this name. For the years I've been this one. If they ask me today which name I can give God, I can say that God has been my provider. Last week I asked my wife, who is God to you? Who am I to you? My wife said, you are my husband. Oh, I said, I'm in trouble. Because I expected my wife to say, I'm your friend. Husband is just a name because you are a father. But you need to be a friend. Are you a friend to your God? Am I a friend to my God? If today Jesus or God will come to stalk church, what will he say about you? What are you doing with your God? What are you doing for your God? And what are you doing to your God? Those are three things. What am I doing with God? When you look at the, the gentleman called Henoch, Enoch walked with who? With God. The people who have something they do with their God. When you look at uh, Job, Noah, sorry, the story of Noah in the book of Genesis, chapter 6. Is it verse 9? Please let's reflect it there. Before I go to my sermon today. Genesis chapter 6. And I like reading the NIV because it's a... Yes, I like King Kings, King James, yes, version, but I, I like so much to do with the uh, NIV. Chapter 9, of verse, verse 8 to verse 9. What does it say? Chapter 6. Chapter six. Joe, I thought you gave... The, oh, I didn't give you... Oh, I, I, I'm going to give you my... Uh, three uh, chapters or verses, chapter and verses that I'm going to use. I'm only going to preach on using three. Uh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 27. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. Now, but no found grace in the eyes of who? The eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. I'm not interested there. Noah was a just man. This one doesn't put it very nice. There's another one that says, Noah was a perfect man. Noah was a perfect man. Who has a different version, please? Yes, my dear sister. What yours says? Yes. He was a perfect man in his generation. Uh, there's somewhere he walked with God. And Noah walked with who? With God. I don't know who am I walking with. Are you a man of God? Am I a man of God? That is the question of today. Samuel chapter 1, First Samuel chapter 9, First Samuel chapter 9, 2 to 10. Samuel, First Samuel, now that's where our sermon is. 
First Samuel chapter 9 verse 2. The Bible says, Kish, are we there? Oh my God, I want these guys to go with me because uh, my teacher told me when you see, you remember. You are likely to forget First Samuel. It's gone? Okay. Sorry. Uh, you, oh my goodness. Mine has gone as well. I don't know what's wrong with the network here now. So there's no sermon for you guys. My laptop is gone. So we can cross them, go home. I'll use the hard copy now. Fast. That is not the version. I want that NIV because it puts very nicely. There are sweet words in that chapter. I think I have one here. Chapter 9. You got it? Pastor Xori, I know you are very poor when it comes to uh, IT. So I'll not try to call you to help me because I'll be calling more trouble again. So I better save myself. Allow me use my my internet to get it back. Kish, yeah, this is the right. Okay, thank you. Kish had a son named Saul. Kish was the father of Saul. So he had a son called who? Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel. This man as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel. They has been never handsome gentleman. You know, Pastor Xori says he's handsome. But, Pastor, this man was handsome. And when the Bible says that somebody is handsome, oh my goodness, it means it. When the Bible says that Sarah was beautiful, was beautiful. But be careful when you're handsome. It's not because the physical. You will see what will happen with the handsome man at the end of the story. A man, he could, there was no any handsome man in Israel by that time. I don't know he's handsome today in this church. He was a head taller than anyone else. He had a nice head. I'm seeing Joe saying, Pastor Xorio. Next verse. You can put it, the all of it, the all of it, if you can make it. Verse 3, as we are going on, something funny is going to happen. And uh, there's a crisis going to happen in that family. The donkeys of this guy, Kish, they're going to get lost. Please, let's go, verse 3. Now, the donkeys belonging to Saul, Saul's father, Kish, were lost. I like when things get lost in our life. If there are something that I has disturbed and I have lost in my life, it's my father-in-law. From 2017, my father-in-law, I met my father-in-law only for three years. But I have lost that man. I know there are things you have lost in your life that you feel you have lost it. But I want to give you hope today. I know one day we'll meet with that gentleman who was a man of God. He was a man of God. And I need to tell this to my wife because we will meet that gentleman in heaven. So what he needs to do is to be a good guy. So that he can meet his father in heaven. There are things we lose in life. 
There are people who have lost something in their marriage, your business, your career, your job, your wealth. But now understand for you to be a rich man in Israel, you, are, you should have animals. Wealth was known. If you are rich, the number of animals you had, uh, because most of the Jewish were farmers. So this guy was a rich man. You will see it because a rich man, you must have servants. So the, 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 the donkeys disappears. And I don't know why they had to disappear. And Saul is asked to take one of his servants with him to go and look for the donkeys. There are things in, sometimes in life we need to lose them. When we lose them, we get good things. Saul was going to be anointed. The donkeys were to get lost for Saul to be anointed as a king. This was the time Samuel is being a priest and a judge and a military at the same time during the time when the Israel, they want to copy the other nations. They want a king. Samuel tries to tell them, no, it is not time to have a king. I was reading about this gentleman called Samuel. One of my best character in the Bible is Samuel and David. I like them so much. You know, David uh, Samuel comes as a, a child through a miraculous way. You understand how the mother goes through the pain, crying for a child. He was born in a family where the father was a polygamy. And you know, in Africa, you get to marry a second wife if the first wife has not given you children. And if there's something painful in this world, let me tell you, men who are here, Women were barren. They go through hell. I got to understand this when I got married. And uh, six months, my wife could not get pregnant. So the church members were looking at us. Pastor, what is the problem? Are you not doing the right things? <laughs> we prayed. And that's where we have our first son called Silas. It was prayers. So this groom, this soul, the, 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 the Samson we are talking, the, the soul, we, the, the Samuel we are talking about is the man who was brought in a background where the father was a polygamy. And what we expect from that, that boy is to behave like his father. My father used to be a church elder from my childhood. I was born in a family and I was born during the day, the crusades. Were on, and my mother tells me that the first thing they did before I could breastfeed, they took me to the preacher to pray for me, and they brought me back. So it's like my father and my family gave me as an offering to the church. So psychology says 95% of what a father does, the kids, these boys we are seeing here, they will want to be. Because I used to see my father preaching. And the people who mentored me, the people who were around me, were pastors. At one of our tribe in Kenya, we are teachers, our role model are teachers and pastors. And this Seventh-day Adventist church, when the missions get out of this land to Kenya, they came to our, our country, a province called Inyansa. So this guy called Samuel grew in a family where the father was a polygam. But I like this guy. The Bible says that Elkanah was a devoted man. That once in a year, he could go to Israel and give a sacrifice to his wife, Elkanah. Sometimes we need peninas in our lives. Because they would make you preach. They would make you cry. They would make you kneel down and pray. So Penina never gave Anna his time. So he prayed and this man was born in a miraculous way. The name Samuel means God or consecrated or given to God. Now those people were praying for me. My theology teacher, analytics teacher said if people are sleeping in your someone, the problem is not them, it's your someone. 
So I'm in trouble. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I, I, so that people can go home. So he passed through the hills. They are looking for the donkeys. The country of Ephraim through the area around Shalisha. But they did not find. They went into the district of Shalim. But they did not find the, donks, the donkeys. But uh, they did not find the donkeys where they were. Where were not there. Sorry. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin. But they did not find them. Verse 5. When they reached the district of where? Saul said to the servant. Who was with him? Come. Let's go to my father. We will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about it. So let's go home. When I was reading this story, I realized one thing that these two gentlemen did not do when they started their journey. And that is the most mistakes we normally do in our life. They never consulted God when they started their journey. They never got God's approval when they started the journey. Friends, when you get into marriage without God's approval, I want to assure you, you will experience what this gentleman experienced. When you get into a business without God's intervention, without God's approval, without God's consultation, without consulting for God, this is what you go through. They labored. Now, since come back to a gentleman, verse 6, that's where our sermon now starts. But the servant replied, Yes, our dad is worried about us. But before we go, look, in this town, there is a man of God. In this town, there is who? A man of God. What do I mean when I say a man of God? By that time, Israel, the Ark of the Covenant, had been captured. Early had died. Now Saul, Samuel, people used to go to Samuel to consult. If they wanted God, they could go to Samuel to ask them, what has God said? Who are you? Are you a man of God? In this town, Stock, can somebody say that Pastor Elijah, Pastor Xorio, is a man of God? The church is looking for a good pastor. The church is looking for a good elder. The church is looking for a good deacon, a good choir master, Sabbath school, stewardship, family life leader. But I want to tell you, we are looking for a man of God. I don't want to be called a pastor. I want to be called a man of God. When people see me, when people see you, they can see God in you. When they look at you, when they come close to you, they will see the character of God in you. They will see the face of God in you. They will find God in you. When I was in Uganda, we had Ebra, the break, and we were running back to our country. We went to embassy. Now your embassy represents what is in your in your what, whatever is in Kenya is in Uganda. So we ran into embassy because we wanted to be heard. When we got to the embassy, there were music and the photos and the uh, the money, everything that shows the Kenya and the songs. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya in People were singing nice songs for our country. Can people, can God say that my house today where I stay in stock, can it be an embassy for heaven where people, when they come to your house, the angels come to your house, they can hear the music of heaven, everything that is happening in your house represents the character of heaven? That won't be found in my house. One day when I was in uh, the morning, I used to work in a district that I used to commute from town 
to my district because the district I was, the house was not good. The pastor knows it was Kaigat. I used to live in town. So one morning after a Sunday, I had a school. Now I'm planning to go to my, my, to my, my, my home. I stay in Eldred. I work in Kaigat and I stay in Kitale. So I used to stay in Eldred for like two days. I come there on Friday. I prepare for the sermon tomorrow on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I'm back to Kitara to my school. So one morning, someone walks into my house. And knocks the door. Uh, we, were say, we were staying in a rental house and in a compound where we had uh, several tenants there. And this guy says, I want to have a word with you. Then I got out. I was wearing my short and my t-shirt. He says, I want us to go have a word with me in my house. Then I walked with the guy to his house. He stayed in one room where the curtain is the wall. The sitting room and the bedroom, the petition, the wall is a curtain. So he moved the curtain. The wife was there. I said, sit down. I said, why? He pulled a knife. And he said, Pastor, I want to kill this woman. And before I kill this woman, my kids, they normally pray with their kids. They told me that you are a pastor. So I want you to give, to offer a last prayer for this lady before I kill. Now, if there's something that has never happened and I don't pray to happen again, and that is this, that, this one. So, I don't know, Pastor, what could, you could have done. I said, he pulls the knife. So, uh, he, get, he wants to chop the lady. The lady is there. There's another house. So many houses, there are doors, but the door is a bit closed and open. So I calculated, do I run? Because he, these, these things are dangerous here now. But I asked God's wisdom. I say, give me the knife because uh, I need to pray for this knife so that when it goes to this lady, uh, the prayers can work and then he will die peacefully. So I said, I, give me the knife. He gave me the knife. And they say, say close your eyes. So he closed to the eyes. I didn't close my eyes. There are times you need to be you, prayers. You pray and your eyes are open, Pastor. So I asked the lady, what do you want me to, what, what is the last word you can say to your husband? The lady could not speak anything. So I said, let's pray. Father in heaven, Thank you so much for this knife. Bless it because it's going to kill somebody. But before it, it kills this lady, remind this man of your love on the cross. I signaled the lady. The man was closing the eyes. The lady jumped out slowly and went to the next room and closed the house. So we were remaining two of us. So, who is going to be killed now? <laughs> is it me or this guy? I looked at the guy, the guy is still crossing the eyes. I continued to pray, praying, God of heaven, you have been faithful, silent prayer in my life. I need your presence today here. This guy knows that I'm a pastor. Please show your love to this guy. And I said, Amen. The guy was crying. The lady had hidden, taken to the next room. Then I walked to my room. I asked myself, How did this man know that I'm a pastor? Because I normally come there on Friday. In the morning, I go to Kaigat, come back on Sunday, back to Eldred. Friends, 
God is invisible. You cannot hide God. If God is in you, people will see God. God says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, that his character is love. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. And I want us to make, to be serious about this God. In this country where you talk about God, people think you are crazy. When you talk, you introduce the topic about God, people see you as stupid. Stay with that man. Stay with this God. The same God who walked with the Enoch is the same God who is with us today. He has never changed and is still the same God. When you read Job chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, Jesus, God is introducing himself, God is introducing the devil to Satan. When I read these things, I get it sometimes. Why is God having a conversation with somebody who is with, you know, by that time, the devil was representing us in heaven. Now, Job chapter 1. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless. Yes, we are living in the world where people, when you talk about God, they don't want, but there are men who are living in that place, in that time, but they were still upright men. God is looking for a woman and a man he can call today a woman of God. I don't feel good when people call me a pastor. But I feel good when people will say that that man is a man of who? That when they want to see God, they'll find God in you. Can people see Christ in me? The mission of this church is in three chapters. I don't want to ask you that question because I was asked that question I, that I didn't know. For 37 years I've been in this church. The church has been getting, they got the mission wrong. The mission of this church is to make disciples. Not to preach. We have been preaching, 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 preaching. And that's why we are losing the church members. When I was a pastor back in Kenya, I baptized almost 8,000 for four years. But after one year, they are gone. Matthew 28, verse 11. Matthew 28, verse 19, sorry, verse 19 to 20. That is the mission of the church. If one, someone wants to ask you, what do we stand for? That is the verse. I don't want you to put it. Another verse that divines our call, our divine call, is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You have to preach from Jerusalem. That is your house. You cannot lie to people. You know, my wife will tell you who I am. I can be in a suit and you think I'm a man of God, but that lady knows whether I'm a man of God. My kids know whether I'm a man of God. As the church, we need to begin in our own houses. And then go to the neighbors who is Judea. And God has called a church called Seventh day Adventists. And he has given us everything we need. Friends, we need to get out and go. But before you go, what are you going to tell the people if you don't have this God in you? What are you going to share if you don't have God in you? You need to hold this God. He needs to be a friend. He needs to be a personal friend. That's why we normally say that I have received Jesus as my personal. But is it really is our personal savior? Or just we say it because we just say it. How I pray today that this man who died on the cross 2,000 years ago, our brother Jesus, who is coming again, and this time he's not coming as a carpenter. This time he's not coming in a mysterious way. He's going to someone's stomach. To womb. No, this time he's coming as a king. And he's coming for Pastor Elijah. He's coming for someone in stock. Don't, be doing, don't think we are doing jokes here. 
There are women and women in this church. One day, they will find themselves in heaven. I want to be in that place. It's my prayer. That when the, 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 when the sounds, when the trumpet sounds, I'll be found one of them. There's this song which is a, uh, when the Lord called the beyond, when the Lord is called the beyond, when the Lord is called the beyond, when the Lord is called the beyond, I'll be there. Friends, my wife will only be my friend up to the grave. The best thing she'll be doing for me when I'm alive, she'll do the best. But when I'm dead, the the far she will go with me is up to the grave. But there's a man called Jesus who goes beyond the grave. And in fact, our contract with my wife was until dead. So she's free from there. She will only escort me with an expensive coffin, with a very nice suit. And because I'm from England, she has no money. They will take me back to Africa. Very expensive body. But there is a man called Jesus, friends. That man will go with you beyond the grave. It will sound. The voice will sound. The only ones who will get out of that place are the men and women of God. If there's this God in you, that God that you have been with for the rest of your life, that's when God is calling, he's calling his friend. Because God will be part of yourself. As we live in this talk, can we take this God serious? I saw Pastor making a call for the ray preachers to go and preach. We have only a few people. Last week, lesson was saying that everybody, the body of Christ, the leg, the hand, everything, name all the parts and the parts we cannot ma- mention, they have a function in the church. What are you doing in the church? When the members and the people are perishing in this world, you think you are here by accident? We live. We are not here by accident. We didn't leave our district pastors from Kenya to come and make fun here. God has called us to warn the world. Because today, this is our world. Wherever you are, wherever people are, preach to them. Preach, pastor. Preach your sermons because there is a time you will not preach anymore. There is a time you will not sing anymore. If you can sing, sing now. Because you have God in yourself. And the reason why people are not preaching and doing God's work is because they know God in little and knowledge, but they have no personal relationship with God. But today God is asking you and I hope that this will be a awakening call to me as a pastor that uh, God is not interested in my position as a pastor today. God is not interested in what I do in my business. What is interested? Am I a servant. As we stand up with the closing hymn, Jesus came in at the cross. Because it's only the cross of Calvary. It's only the cross of Jesus Christ who will strengthen us. As a welcome pastor for you, to give us a crossing prayer for those who are ready to be called children of the Heavenly Father. For those who want to stand and be called women and ladies of God. I want to ask the team, the Colossus team, to be the first one to come here to say that God today, I want to be called your man, a man of God and a woman of God, as the leaders in this song. And as we sing this song, friends, Let's understand what it does for us. As pastor, you come please to cross with us. That Jesus will keep us near the cross. That Jesus will be our precious fountain. Will heal our broken heart as we renew our relationship again with our Savior. Let's sing.
the cross, there a precious fountain, free for all thy healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my righteous soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross of trembling soul, love and mercy found me. Bright and morning star shed its tears around me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my rapture soul shall find. Rest beyond the river, near the cross of Lamb of God, bring his sin before me, help me walk from day to day, we shadows on me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my love the soul shall find rest beyond the Cross I watch and wait, trusting, trusting ever, till I reach the goal and stand just beyond the river. The cross. In the cross be my glory ever, till my life just soul shall find rest beyond the living. It's my prayer that as we live in this world, that we will find the glory of Jesus Christ. That not my glory, but Jesus' glory be found in you. If it's your prayer that whatever you do, my glorify God. I want to ask Pastor Kisorio to commit us in his, God's hand. That our life today, as we live day to day, will give God the glory. And we will devote our lives to Jesus, to use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our God and our Father. Kish family lost donkeys. And it took three days for Saul to look for the donkeys. Instead of getting the donkeys the servant whispered, there is a man of God here. We are asking ourselves today, can it be mentioned that there is man of God in the place of work where we work? In our homes, this afternoon we are praying God. We surrender ourselves. We surrender our souls 
we surrender our hearts. We surrender our bodies, oh God, to you. Our families to you. Our relationships to you. So that God, we can be mentioned to be men and women of God. And we are standing to sing this song, Jesus, keep me near the cross. We sing that there we are trembling. There we need to be washed. So that God, as we cross the river, we will be indeed sanctified. Lord, this word is so clear to us. We are leaving now our old nature to take the new nature in you. Accept us, dear Jesus. Accept our children. Accept our youths. All women in this church and all men that God, they will be called after your name. May this word bring a release in our hearts. Those whom have lost donkeys, may they find you so that they can get donkeys. The family of Kish, Saul, found the man of God who directed him to where the donkeys were. Allow those whom have lost their loved one Build hope in you that we have not lost. Whatever we have lost, God, let it be known that we have not lost. For in finding you, whatever we have lost, we will receive it back. Bless this church, O oh God. May this church be a place of love. May this church be a fellowship that is full of warmth and full of friendship. Continue blessing our leaders, our pastor, our elders, all our church board members, that God, as they lead this church, they may lead this church to the true vine who is Jesus. And now as we part, may your continence be upon us. May your grace be sufficient for all of us as you continue blessing our pastor. For we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless church.